Gemma 3 on my M4 Mac Mini Pro. According to Google, it's the current most capable model that runs on a single GPU. It's been updated recently, but it's been out for maybe uh, a week or so, probably almost two weeks. Um, but here we go. It's the latest language model from Google that should be able to run on this machine. So the Mac Mini Pro in question is a 24 gig of memory. It's got a 512 gig SSD. It is the base model as far as the M4 Pro Mac Mini is concerned. As you can see on screen, we've got activity monitor running here, showing the memory pressure and swap file usage. We've also got GPU history down here. Because I'm using QuickTime to record the screen, that's why it's being utilized a little bit. And then I've also got Olama running on my machine. So if I just do a, a version check, it's version 0.6.2. And that's important because Gemma needs version 0.6 or later. So if you have a version of Olama that's a, uh, a could it only be a few weeks old you need to make sure you do the update um, what I'm going to be doing in the first instance is run the 12 billion parameter model uh, and that's going to be from olama.com copy that command paste it into the terminal and then it will do the usual pulling the language file down and then build it out a manifest I'm actually going to cancel that and the reason why I'm against all that is because I've actually downloaded the blob file previously. And I'm just going to show you where you put that. If you already have the things downloaded and you want to uh, move it from one machine to another. So that's what I'm doing in this instance. I've already got this on a machine. I've copied it to an SSD and I'm just going to drag and drop it into this folder which is the users folder my username dot olama and then models so let's go into that folder sorry the blobs folder which is one folder deeper I'm going to grab the blob which is the 8.6.2 One five gigabytes. Not easy to say, see and recognize from these file names. I just know this because of the the size of the this particular file. So this will be the twelve billion parameter model from Google, and then we'll see this will all happen a lot quicker. This is all going in real time. Oh, there you go. It's it's instantaneous. So I'm just going to do the first command. Can sometimes take a minute or so for the first command to kick in, and that's because it's loading the language model into memory. Let's just pop open this. Let's reorganize some windows. There we go. So let's exit out of Olama. And then I'm just going to run it, but in verbose mode. And that's just so when I type in a command, I also get some stats about the performance. So how many tokens it's used and how quickly it's responded to. So first test, please write 500 words about artificial intelligence. And then like all my other tests I've done in other videos, it go off and do its thing. We can see here the memory pressure's good. So Alarm is taking 12 gig of the 24 gig system memory. Um, and that's what's great about the Apple Mac is the unified memory architecture means that, that a large proportion of that memory is available for the GPU to use. We can see the 
GPU is kind of uh, under stress here, but that's what we'd expect to see. We want it you know, maximizing and running as much of the GPU as it can do. Uh, and we've got a uh, an output result of 36 seconds, which I think is pretty darn good actually. Not checking the quality of the output, but you know, speed wise, that seems to be quite good. I'm going to ask a slightly trickier question. Language models tend to struggle with copyright information unless they are that's part of their training data. So um, please provide the lyrics for Love Me Do by the Beatles. And what's interesting here is will it try and do it <clears throat> will it do a decent job or will it hallucinate okay so this is hallucinating um fortunately it did it really quickly because it's a short song but yeah it didn't do a terribly jo good job of giving us the right answer sometimes i'd rather it would just say well this isn't something i know it's not in my data and um spend a couple of seconds of saying you know, don't have that information for you but it's hallucinated some response there it's not a load in language models a lot of them do this especially the smaller language models that we're seeing here and i guess that's a restriction of the amount of data that they're trained on so i like to three prompt examples which I will use with an AI generator an AI tool I think I'll put tool to create Python scripts Okay, the that t that prompt is a slightly challenging one because actually I'm not asking for three scripts. I'm asking for three prompts, and it's done a really good job of understanding the nuance of that prompt. Even though I, you know, I struggled with describing it myself, it's got to understand that what I'm after is prompts and not. Um, three script examples so it's done a good job there especially considering this is pretty rapid this is doing a, uh, a fairly good and quick turnaround on this request again I'm not testing the quality of the output because I don't have the the, the necessarily the means to do that that's the kind of thing that when you start using a language model you find out whether it's um, it does what you want it to or not so again, um, that's not the purpose of these videos. It's just to show you the performance on this base Mac mini system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit out of this language model. So let's release that. I'm going to go for the 27 billion parameter model. And um, again, I know it's 17 gigs. I've got the file already downloaded so let's go oh, I don't want to connect to server let's go to folder let's go to the blobs folder and then let's in a new finder window grab the that 17 gig file there we go Actually, this is something that you might want to consider is having the certainly the blob files, the bits that take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to download. It's always a good idea to have a copy of those um, from a backup perspective. So you can see out here, actually, I've got um, files in this on this SSD that I don't have on my main system because it's just the amount of data that they take up. So I will copy and paste bits and pieces to and from this SSD because then when I need it I just don't need to wait or I don't want to be waiting for, for, for so long 
So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to change that to the 27 billion parameter model. This is going to be slower. I'm actually going to close Chrome down, so um, making more memory available to the system. Not much, but a little bit more memory, memory available to the system. Let's see how it fares. So we are seeing the memory utilization quite high. We've got Olama using the best part of 19 gig of the system memory. We've got some swap going on. Um, but it does seem to be just about doing the job. Uh, let's uh, please write 500 words about artificial intelligence. Oh, as ever on these uh, videos, there is a spelling amnesty. So if I do get something spelt wrong, then fortunately AI is pretty clever and it will uh, it will realise that and it will just actually go after the words that uh, I intended. So yeah, I think this is uh, this is quite interesting actually. So the memory utilisation this is towards the uh, upper end of its capabilities. There's not much swapping going on, and if this was. 18 gig of swap file we'd see this running so much slower than this is uh, on the 24 gigs that i've got available so if it's having to draw from the ssd to um to you know, serve and, and process the request so again i think this is the the top end of what you can expect from the m4 mac mini pro and one minute and three seconds for that task considering the size of the model i think that's pretty good going um, i'm going to ask it to recite the lyrics from the beatles song let's do love me do again And I'm not expecting miracles, so I'm actually not expecting it to be accurate necessarily. There we go. It's hallucinating. It's kind of what I'd expect. And you know, I think it's worthwhile knowing what language models can and cannot do. Interestingly, the, um, the Mistral Small, which I believe is 24 billion parameters, that has the, this data in its training set so it does a good job of reciting those lyrics um, recite the poem if by Rudyard Kipling the language models tend to succeed in reciting this poem um, and again it's just like I say it's depends heavily on what's in the training data so i think we are in good in good stead here we're, we're getting a good response from the 20 this is the 27 billion parameter model of Gemma 3 so yeah well done you yeah, know this isn't that hard for it to pass this test i'm just going to do the the nuanced Python script test next and I expect that to run into the possibly a couple of minutes to succeed uh, three script prompt examples So we'll see how this one fares. Like I say, I'm expecting this maybe to take a couple of minutes to complete. I suspect if I compared the output of this compared to the output of the, I'm going to say, 12 billion parameter model, 
I need to check that. Um, the other model I checked earlier, then I would expect this to have a. It's got better training data, so there's a high likelihood the quality of these prompts is higher. So then it just becomes a trade-off between quality and time. Do you wait longer for good quality? And often it then becomes quite task dependent. So if you're working on something that the quality output is less important, then you'll probably use a um, an even smaller language model to get the the reaction time up and to get to nearer to real time um, prompt responses because you know that that can save you a lot of time in the um, in these type of situations, especially when they're part of a larger workflow and there's a numerous steps and if there are numerous AI agents responding to those steps you want the smallest model that you can get away with to do the best job so here we go one minute 25 seconds I think that's overall a good a good result and I would also go as far as say I think that's a, yeah, a great result for the Apple Mac mini m4 pro being able to run this language model um, within the footprint of effectively a base system this is a 1300 pound system it's you know it's really hard you can't even buy a uh, an RTX 5090 for that kind of money this is an entire computer yes it's not the fastest um, but it is you know, providing some decent output at a, um, you know, a reasonable amount of performance and you've got a whole system you know, you've got an operating system you've got you know all the tools that you'd expect with a desktop computer so for me i think this is a bit of a result for the m4 mac mini pro um, i'm impressed with what gemma 3 can do and how quickly this all processes i'm going to be using this model uh, and the 12 billion parameter model in my um, workflows moving forward and i look forward to seeing what it can do if you're into ai AI tools and especially running them on a Mac um, and I do most of my testing on a Mac Mini Pro then have a look at this video over here.